Now, Dean Steinbergen will open the program for us.
seats. We'll get started with this evening's program. And just as a reminder, all our students should be seated up here together in the wonderful student section. So uh, thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, I'm Alexis Steinbergen. I'm the Dean of the School of Nursing, and I love celebration. So this is one of my uh, very favorite ones. And so I want to welcome all our students, our staff, our family and friends, faculty to the 2023 Light the Lamp Pinning Ceremony at the University of Texas at Austin. Some 170 years ago, Florence Nightingale used her lamp as a beacon in the night to comfort and guide the care of the wounded in the military hospitals. Her light has blazed a path of service through the countless nurses who have followed in her footsteps. Today, our Light the Lamp event celebrates the flame of Florence Nightingale's legacy. And I want you to reflect a moment, students, on the key themes of her legacy and how important each one of those remains today. These themes are the use of evidence. You've all taken a research course, or you will, that's what we call it today. Uh, ventilation, clean air, and the ability to access uh, the environment and personal and household cleanliness, patient observation, 
proper management of the environment, and advocacy. Now, most importantly, Florence Nightingale taught these first trained nurses, and they didn't use educated, they said trained, but I like to use educated. They called them that back then. She taught them the skills and habits of observation and assessment, and also you all taken a course in that and are prepared. So including what and how to observe and how to report facts rather than opinions. And so I know you have learned all these skills that support, and knowledge that support those themes. So today, we symbolically take up our own lanterns of compassionate, competent caring. I like to emphasize both of those words together, compassionate and competent. One without the other is not very effective. And we take these up each in our own way to more brightly walk our own path of service to the world. Through humanistic, patient-centered care, let us be the keepers of that flame and emphasize a value that has been at the center of what we teach and practice at the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing. You are our 17th group of students who will take this oath to provide compassionate care prior to beginning your clinical experiences at the School of Nursing. Tonight, at the end of the ceremony or towards the end, you will take the Nightingale Pledge to provide high quality and compassionate care. The lamp lighting ceremony formally recognizes a student's entry into the nursing profession. As part of today's ceremony, you will each receive a specially designed pen for nursing students to serve as a visual reminder of your, excuse me, of your commitment as a nurse to provide competent and compassionate care. By having the School of Nursing host today's Light the Lamp ceremony, I am reiterating to you, Longhorn nursing students, two important messages. First, that competent, compassionate care is the hallmark of clinical practice. And as I said, both competence, both skill and knowledge and compassion are essential for that practice. Second, that we at the School of Nursing take great pride in having you represent Longhorn Nursing as you embark on your clinical experiences. Don't have any doubt that I get feedback about that. People tell me from the community, from our hospital partners, and uh, I'd say 99.9% .9 of that feedback is extremely positive, and I'd like to keep it that way, okay? Uh, this event is not only a ceremony, but also a celebration. A celebration of the high quality, skilled healthcare and service that you as long-term nursing students provide to the community. We are pleased to have one of our distinguished faculty members, Dr. Anna Todd, to provide the keynote for today's ceremony. Dr. Todd is a strong exemplar of the very intelligent and compassionate care that we are recognizing today. Dr. Todd? As you can see, I need a little assistance. Okay. Okay, so today we celebrate the entry into nursing into the nursing profession through the light the lamp ceremony. So you've learned in theory what it means to be a nurse and to provide nursing care at the bedside and in the community. You'll be applying what we call the science and art of nursing. Today, I'm going to focus on the art of nursing through compassionate care. The dictionary definition of compassion is as follows, quote, sympathetic consciousness of others, distress together with the desire to alleviate. So when I asked the majority of my five children to define compassion, quote, slash compassionate care, these were the following comments. Quote, compassion is when you put yourself in the place of the person who is in need of help and take action to make it better. It is not just sympathy. It, compassion is when you feel empathetic toward your patient. You meet them where they are and then do something 
to help them be independent. So I have a nurse and I have an occupational therapist. So those were from the, the nurse and the occupational therapist. In addition, my, at that point, my young poli-sci student, also major, also commented, Compassionate cares when you notice, this was my OT daughter again, who made, who said, when you notice a gentleman who's been using the same pair of socks for a week in rehab, and you ask him if he wants a fresh pair. Compassion is walking around in someone else's shoes so you can help them. Compassion is gentle, kind, sympathy, Compassionate care is when you take the time to engage in your patient. It's the little things you do. That's my son who's a lawyer. And then I chose not to interview my oldest son who's a financial advisor because you never know what kind of mood he'll be in these days. So I was able through my very, very small sample, uh, I was able to get the sense that compassion can have slightly different meanings but consistent is the notion that compassion is a sentiment that serves as a catalyst that fuels an action, caring action. Compassion and compassionate care is the core element of nursing. In fact, compassion is so essential to nursing that the very first provision of the new, not so new anymore, updated, ANA Code of Ethics states, the nurse practices with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and unique attributes of every person. Now that's a review for your ethics. For those of you, I know you all took ethics. Okay, so what does compassionate care look like? Who's ever spent time in the hospital or knows somebody who has spent time in the hospital? Well, I can tell you from my personal experience as a patient with having to have two back surgeries, I recall that most of those nurses came in and they would glide into the room and glide out and ask me very quickly, what is your, what's your pain level on a scale from one to 10? I wanted to say 4.275. No one bothered to stop. No one bothered to really take the time. Um, in giving medications, it was like drive through meds. But then there was one nurse who was what I call dressed in her whites, because that was back then. And she took the time. She was a seasoned nurse who came into the room. She pulled up a chair, put her hand on my hand and asked, how are you? I hadn't heard these words. I, had, I, I didn't know. I was like, are you talking to me? Oh my, you're actually willing to touch me. I was so grateful for her that day because she knew that I was in need of support. She took the time. She spoke to me, not at me. Her eye contact was reassuring. And most of all, she was present. Just being there was a comfort. One of the most beautiful examples of compassionate care was given to me by a friend who's a CNS, a clinical nurse specialist, uh, who graduated from the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, she was a caregiver, uh, uh, she managed care for older adults. And she had a 90 year old patient who was admitted to the hospital during a fall, after fall. And that day, my friend received a call saying that his wife was also admitted to the hospital. But she was, she said she was too sick. She had pneumonia and she was too sick to be with her husband. So they put the patients, the husband and wife on the separate floor. The husband desperately wanted to see his wife that he had never, he had not been separated from her. They'd been married for 65 years. However, he was too weak to see her, even though he was in a wheelchair. So my friend was very creative. She said, hmm, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out a, a way to get them together. So she decided to go down and get a gurney, a stretcher from the ER. But initially, the nurses said, oh, no, you can't take this. This is not, we don't, we don't do this. So after some convincing, the nurse said, I'm going to bring the stretcher. And she brought the two, she brought the wife to be next to her husband so they could spend time before she passed away. So they were at the same level, holding hands before they could say goodbye. So that is one example of compassionate care. And this morning, actually, I had my daughter who is an occupational therapist. I asked her, I said, do you, do you have any new stories about compassionate care? And she said, yes, mama. She said, I sure do. She said, there was a patient in rehab. She's an occupational therapist working at, in a rehab hospital. And she said there was a, a an elderly man who had a stroke and he was had he was a Spanish speaking only a person who only spoke Spanish but he couldn't talk he became very depressed and he was refu refusing treatment and it was the nurse who decided who noticed and said my goodness we need to do something about this we need to provide him with some sense of belonging and help him and provide that compassionate care. So the nurse got the team, the healthcare team together and decided they would put another patient who also spoke only Spanish and put them in treatment to, in the same treatment room. Well, by golly, he started eating and participating in his treatments. And my daughter said, you know, it was so gratifying to see that first, it was the nurse's idea, but to go beyond, to think beyond and provide that care. So, and I've also had the privilege of watching my nursing students in their public health rotation uh, work with women experiencing homelessness, just listening to their stories, being present to listen to the clients who often thank the students for caring and being there for them for listening when no one else does. So these are a few examples of compassionate care, a manifestation of the art of nursing. Quote, walk around in your patient's shoes, empathize with them, and most of all, act on it so that you, so that you may help patients maintain their independence and their dignity. See the human in front of you, I would like to add that while you're practicing compassion, you need to practice self-compassion. You probably have heard people say, how can you care for others if you don't take care of yourself? Most of us choose the nursing, nursing as a profession to nurture and care for others. And many of us in this profession ignore our own self-care and fail to engage in self-compassion. Kristen Neff, a renowned expert in self-compassion, and professor right here at the University of Texas, defines compassion as, quote, a self-attitude that involves treating oneself with warmth and understanding in difficult times and recognizing that making mistakes is part of being human, unquote. She goes on to say that being self-compassionate is treating yourself in the same way you would treat a good friend when you're having hard times, you fail, or you notice something you don't like about yourself by being supportive and loving. So remember, while you are busy making a difference in your patients' lives, that I undoubtedly know you will, please take time to mindfully shower yourself with self-compassion and know that you're not supposed to be Florence Nightingale, the Lady of the Lamp, was the embodiment of compassion and our role model for compassionate care through her. She was named Lady of the Lamp, as the Dean said, because of her reputation for carrying the lamp in the darkness to attend to suffering soldiers in the Crimean War. The lamp symbolizes the light that we bring as nurses to our suffering patients at the bedside in the community. The light is the hope we give to patients through compassionate care. 
Remember to embrace the privilege we have as nurses to make a difference. Now more than ever, I ask you that you continue to carry the lamp and be the light in the darkness. Today marks the celebration into your opportunity to become one of the countless nurses who are passionate about compassionate care. Go forth and carry the light lamp proudly. So I have one poem to read you and I wanna leave this with you as you go on in your next chapter. This poem is called, What Do You See, Nurse? What do you see, nurse? What do you see? What are you thinking when you're looking at me? A crabby old woman, not very wise, uncertain of habit, with faraway eyes, who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice, I do wish you'd try. Who seems not to notice the things that you do and forever is losing a sock, stocking or shoe. Who, resisting or not, lets you do as you will while with bathing and feeding the long day to fill. Is that what you see? Is that what you're thinking? Is that what you see? And open your eyes, nurse. You're looking, you're not looking at me. I'll tell you who I am as I sit here so still, as I do your at your bidding, as I eat at your will. I'm a small child of 10 with a father and a mother, brothers and sisters who love one another. A young girl of 16 with wings on her feet, dreaming that soon now a lover shall meet, a bride soon at 20. My heart gives a leap, remembering the vows that I promised to keep. At 25 now I have young of, of my own, who need me to guide a secure, happy home. A woman of 30, my young now grown fast, bound to each other with ties that should last. At 40, my young sons have grown and are gone, but my man's beside me to see I don't mourn. At 50 once more, Babies play around my knee. Again, we know children, my loved one and me. Dark days are upon me, my husband is dead. I look at the future, I shudder with dread. For my young are all rearing young of their own, and I think of the years and the love that I've known. I'm now an old woman, and nature is cruel. Tis just to make old age look like a fool. The body, it crumbles, grace and vigor depart. There's now a stone where I once had a heart, but inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells, and now and again, my battered heart swells. I remember the joys, I remember the pain, and I'm loving and living life over again. I think of the years all too few gone too fast, and accept the stark fact that nothing can last. So open your eyes, nurse, open and see. Not a crabby old woman, Look closer, see me. Thank you, Dr. Todd, for sharing that moving a meaningful and inspirational story and poem. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, families and guests. My name is Lin Nguyen. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Services. And what that means is that I get to work with our uh, wonderful staff and also faculty. Um, as we're working with students from the time to say, please let me in, to the time to say, please let me out. Right. And uh, tonight, you know, we have an event that uh, their students are halfway through, it's like, please let me through. Right. And so you guys see them come through. Uh, I, I also play the role tonight of uh, being your MC uh, for, 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 like, for like the lamp. Now, students, J1s, Junior 1s, it's Dr. Bloom and Doom from your uh, uh, J1 orientation class. Uh, but tonight I'm going to be a little bit out of character, and uh, we're not going to do gloom and doom. We're not going to talk about board of nursing. Don't use drugs. Don't get arrested, and, 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 and all that stuff. Right? Instead, uh, we're going to celebrate uh, break you like uh, we should because it's, it's, it's your milestone. So first, congratulations. Right? Uh, and uh, I, you know, uh, I brag about you in front of your uh, in front of class, but I also want to brag in front of your family and, 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 
uh, and, and our guests, right? you've gone a long way to, the, to this point. Right? Uh, of course, you got admitted to one of the most toughest programs to get admitted into at the University of Texas at Austin. You know, we only have capacity for 2% of the applicants who apply, whether it be freshmen or internal transfers. So make sure you mention that to your parents. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, the, during those times when you're sitting through anatomy and microbiology, you're know, like, what does this have to do with nursing? Right? Uh, uh, and, and getting over that and then getting to the part where you're doing your clinicals and you're, you're poking mannequins and probably each other, uh, uh, to the time now where you're going to get to work with, uh, with, with patients, right? with people in the community. People like um, my kids, you know, uh, people like me as well. We all be benefit uh, from that. So uh, I want to congratulate you again for, for this milestone. It's, it, it's quite a, a, an accomplishment. And I want you to know that you are going to not only survive, you're going to thrive at Jim Right? In fact, I want to prove it to you, right? And I want to prove to you that there's that no students have been harmed in the making of the JM semester. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I know y'all like real data. So I'm gonna bring up a student, a senior, uh, uh, who's going to uh, talk with you about uh, how how great J1 is gonna be, how you're gonna survive, and, and no one was harmed in the making. Right? If anything, y'all gonna be awesome at the end of it. So uh, our student speaker is uh, Hui Le, and he, uh, please give him a uh, hand of applause. Hi everyone. Um, if you can't tell, I'm really nervous. Sitting up here, the caffeine didn't help. So let's see. Thank you, Dr. Nguyen, um, for your introduction. My name is Hui, and I am a S2, so this is my last semester. Um, congrats, y'all. Junior first semester. You made it halfway through. <laughs> I know. Keep going. That's a big, big accomplishment. So first, I'm going to ask y'all a few questions for us to get to know each other. And these are not rhetorical questions, okay? So I need you all to raise your hands um, if you identify yourselves in these questions. First one, who's in here because they care about people? Mm -hmm. Everyone should raise their hand. Y'all all did, yeah. The second question is, who's in here is first in family to be involved in healthcare? I love that, okay. Third question, who's in here anxious about clinical days? <laughs> I was in your shoes, and I'll tell you all a bit more about it. And then the last one, who's in here think there's never enough time in the world? Yeah. We live in a busy world, and so look at all the peers around you. You have many things in common than you think. There will be time that you might feel like you have no idea what you're going to do or need to do. And there will be time that connection with others feels like just the thing you're looking for. During J1 semester, my nursing friends and I struggle to balance school, work, in personal life. But you know what change? I ask for help and lean on nursing friends and faculty. They provided guidance and reassurance that I could do it. I'm here now. So looking back, there are a few things that I wish I would have done a little bit differently. And I want to share those with, with them with y'all. This past summer, I went on a cycling trip with an organization called Texas for Thousand for Cancer to fundraise for cancer research and support services, starting from Austin all the way to the Canadian border. 
I got to meet patients outside the hospital setting. Suddenly, question after question went through my head when I started to connect with them. Some of the questions are, what do you do? How far do you have to drive to the clinic? Tell me more about your life. How do you spend time with your loved ones? I quickly realized that it was more than just my clinical skills, that I can provide space for healing and compassion. Very much echoing all the speech you heard before me today. It was more than my ability to take blood pressure or listen to the heart and lungs in the right place. It was simply about as if you're talking with a dear friend. There's this common statistics referred in public health. Only 20% of someone's health is determined by healthcare. The other 80% is determined by factors, not healthcare. Can you believe that? If we want to make a strong and lasting impact on your patient's health, we need to learn how to provide care for them beyond the hospital walls. So then, what do we do? The secret thing is, dot, 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 you just got to ask. Humanity is the one of the strongest skills each of you has right now. Humanity. Nothing fancy, just what we've been doing for thousands of years. You just got to ask the patient and their families of who they are as a person. Be patient with your patients. In giving people the time, even just five to 10 minutes, you might find out that they're artists who travel the world, a proud grandma who likes hanging out with her grandchildren, a young teenager who learns how to play ukulele by herself, a college student like you and me, who's anxious about his next school project, or a family member who's going to miss their kid when they live far away from home. Along with these questions, you may also learn that they don't have access to fresh produce, that they don't have enough money to pay for rent. We all know how rent is expensive these days, not to mention eggs. <laughs> that they travel hours and hours to get to the clinic. It's hard to manage good health when it feels like the world is constantly against you. So addressing social needs and hearing your patients out can make a huge difference in patient care. It's that simple. Ask, listen, and follow up. Working in a team and advocating for patient are foundation to being an excellent nurse. And who knows, maybe you'll find a little story of yourself through them as well. I remember on the very first day of clinical, so it will be soon to be y'all, um, I met an older patient in rehab setting, excited to go home that day. I asked about his experience being a patient. What I heard next, I didn't expect at all. He said, quote, you're the first person to sit down and have a conversation with me the whole time I was here. He told me about his hopes and dreams of recovery to be able to play golf and run again, to spend more time with family away from work, and to be independent. He also shared with me about his struggles with mental health. I connected him with social resources and reassured him about his ability to recover. He was discharged later that day, and I still vividly remember what he told me. Quote, keep doing what you do. Conversation with you allow me to put things back into perspective, kiddo. You'll be an excellent nurse. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was reminded of the things important to me, too. All I did was asking, 
listening, and following up. I believe in your ability because you have shown so much resilience from studying your way through COVID, passing difficult classes. We all know how we felt during those late, late night study sessions at the library for chemistry, microbiology, anatomy, question mark, <laughs> and spending hours in open lab to practice clinical skills that you have now achieved competency. Remember, you're in it together. Lean on each other. Communicate your needs to your loved ones. Ask for help from faculty, staff, friends, and family. There's nothing better at the end of the day to have learned that you've impacted someone's health and also post-clinical nap. <laughs> I'm very excited for you all. Congratulations again, and hook up. Thank you for sharing your story, Courtney. So now, we come to the part where the pinning ceremony, and uh, it's going to take a village to do this because I have instructions for everyone. Right? Uh, first, I'd like to recognize our faculty pinners who are going to put, uh, put on the pins for the students. As I call you, would you please come up? Uh, Dean Steinbergen. <laughs> Dr. Todd. Dr. Hernandez. <laughs> As students, you're all lucky. I'm not gonna be the ones reading your name. <laughs> Instead, we're gonna have Dr. Carrie McDonald, who's gonna be our name reader. Dr. McDonald. <laughs> Student instructions have three parts. Uh, one is that Miss Mira Rajagopalan over there will uh, tell you when to, your role to rise, and then you rise, and then you make a line. Uh, second, um, when you get uh, get there, you take the back of your pen uh, apart and get and get that ready. So that's second part of part one. Uh, part two, you're gonna hand your name card. You must have the name cards. Okay, good. All right, thank you. All right, got it. Um, to Ms. Barajas, do we have all the names up here already? Okay, great, great. And then Dr. McDonald will read out your name, and we're gonna do this, uh, we, we have the name one at a time, but there'll be uh, three of you being pinned at once. Once your name is read, what you do is you go to your favorite uh, faculty up here. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> no pressure. I, I was 15. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 but uh, you know, find you know, an opening. Uh, guests and, and, uh, and families, um, please hold your applause until the third name is, is read. That way, everyone its name gets heard, and then after that, you could, you know, whatever you want to make noise, go for it, right? So now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. McDonald. All right, Brianna Taylor Bridges. Ojiama Ajay. Amani Elise Evans. 
Samantha White, Jade Alexis Columna, Bernice Martinez Ayboites, Maria Jose Forrest, <laughs> Isabella Lawi, <laughs> Ray Dominique Mendoza, Nada, Olivia Haddad, Caitlin Elise Ballard, Avery Sarah Foster. Nicole Hayes, Dominique Jordan Garzoli. Thank <laughs> you. 
Julia Heilring, Nadia Gutierrez, Morgan Emery Miller. Denise Hernandez, <laughs> Lindsay Guajardo, <laughs> Abigail Samson <laughs> or Morley. Maya Nayar, Vanessa Lissette Fausto, Lauren Fan. Joanna Co. Ale Vivas. Edina Co. Dwight Anthony Lisi, Alondra Ravidez, Alessandra Ruiz. Thank <laughs> you. 
congratulations, families, students. Uh, for this next part of the ceremony, we are there's gonna there's an oath that you're gonna give, and Dr. Todd is gonna come up here and lead you in that oath. We'll also put the words on here as well, and also um, on your card. <laughs> Anybody missing the back of a pen? Okay. So would everyone, you should have a candle in front of you, go ahead and, and make sure it's lit. And so, we'd like everybody to, all the students to stand up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and read along. I pledge in the presence of this assembly to honorably practice my profession of nursing. I pledge to be the best nurse I can be by applying evidence-based practice, engaging in lifelong learning, collaborating with colleagues, and educating those in my care. I will do these things remembering quality patient care is my main priority. I pledge to communicate effectively with my patients and colleagues and to promote teamwork in order to provide optimal care. I pledge to always remember my patients are not just patients, they are people just like me. I pledge to be an advocate for my patients in the most tumultuous times of their lives. I will practice patient and family-centered care, and I will make time to listen to my patients' fears and stories. I pledge to practice with integrity I realize that nursing is not simply a discipline, it is an art, a science, and a way of life. Caring is at the center of my being, and I will exude it in all interactions. I pledge to do all of these things remembering I make a difference in the lives of my patients each day. Now I have some closing information, instructions, and recognition that uh, I, I'd like to share with you. First of all, uh, we're all, at the School of Nursing, we're all about students. And um, not only in the service that we provide, but, but um, because we know that our students will serve the, our community. But also in the making of, uh, of our events, so tonight, we have three student organizations who sponsor, uh, uh, help sponsor this event, uh, Light the Lamp. And they are HNSA Hispanic Students Association, I believe, you know, the members are out there. UTNSA, uh, UT Nursing Student Association. And also, SCAN, Student Community of Asian Nurses. Also, a plan for them. They are fundraising uh, back there with their merch and, uh, and, uh, and and flowers and things that they thought that would be really good to have for the family. That's for them, okay? The, the school of nursing, your free stuff is is in the back. Uh, in the back. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to thank our student staff, uh, folks you know, on my, my team, my office, to help make this happen. Y'all met some of them in the check-in area. Uh, Brooke Barazowitz, uh, she's working in the room. Uh, Brittany Garza, and, and Haley Matsumura. Um, 
and then on that mini stage back there, uh, do the live stream for families and friends who can make it like the tour. And of course, up front here, we have Ms. Amira Rajkopal and Ms. Michelle Brahas. <laughs> also, of course, we have our photographer, Ms. Janet uh, Hill. He's going to take these wonderful pictures. And we'll be putting the pictures up on the school nursing page for that event. And then, of course, we have our mastermind for this event, Ms. Yaritza Estrada over here. Uh, she's just been working really hard on Fantastic. Uh, she's our director of special events, student leadership, and scholarships. So, uh, so uh, final instructions. So, uh, J one students and also our, our, our pinners, if we if y'all could come up here, and Miss Janelle will uh, help align you, and we're going to take a, a, a group picture, and uh, we'll post it on our uh, school webpage and event. So, congratulations, families and, and, and students. Students, if you, have, if you could focus on this uh, Janet, uh, yeah. and then, uh, yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 